Welcome back to our final game of the day between Impunity and Beyond Gaming. We have our uh, resident Singaporean here to root for the home crowd team, and you have me, Plummet, as the play-by-play -play right here to cap off your night with the PCS. Of course, though, a big thank you to our sponsors at Riot Games, Carry uh, Live Co., and Karina. Uh, those are our organizers, and of course, to CTPC Bank, the, uh, as you've all heard many times in the info commercial, top financial institution in Taiwan. So let, thank you all for making this league possible, and in we go into the match. Now, I know for a fact that Impunity as a Singaporean squad is near and dear to your heart. But I just want to ask you a quick question. What's your favorite Impunity lineup so far? <laughs> I mean, are they still considered a Singaporean lineup, though? Like, are they still considered? Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this season, are they still a Singaporean team? Sure. No. <laughs> no, of course. Like, I love the squad. I mean, and, um, I think because in the past, like we saw during spring, we were trying to feel like two or three Singaporeans because, of course, the organization itself uh, is still a Singaporean org. But during summer, I think they decided, you know, they're going to for a different approach that picked up a whole bunch of, of veterans uh, to try and mix in with like a couple of rookies here and there. We're going to take a look at the BYG roster first, uh, real quick, however. There are your screens Mikai, Husha, Minji, Wako. <laughs> you went a little bit too uh, fast right there, I can tell. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just see. I thought that Kino like got this haircut, um, because I think during the break he might have uh, done a bit of his um, army service in Taiwan, and that was why he had to get the haircut. But I think that he had it for a while, like two months, and then was like, you know what, I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna roll with it. But anyway, so uh, BYG, you know, they're still doing that thing where they're trying to figure out if they want to feel Kai or if they want to feel Liang. Of course, both kind of have their own uh, weaknesses and strengths here uh, and there. I think Kai is a bit stronger going as the team fight is a bit weaker in lane whereas Liang has the opposite problem generally like he is more likely to win the top lane matchup but then isn't as good during the team fight so BYG are still trying to figure that one out uh, Impunity Esports however uh, they are fielding Jackpot Alex Apex LZ as well as Winnie uh, today I think it's uh, LZ that they are swapping out yep. from yesterday's roster and effectively this squad I mean we know they move a bunch of pieces here and there all over the place but effectively this is their second week of play with jackpot over in the top side ever mm -hmm. since they just suddenly dropped icu from their roster at the end of week number two so even though we're in week four and we're going into the second round robin the thing is imp like haven't figured out what roster that they want to play with yet and it still always seems like it's always like a week one week two sort of team that they are fielding so that's that's a bit of a worrying trend Today's featured matchup is going to be Husha versus uh, Alex this time around. Pretty similar champion pools over in the jungle. Pretty much what is meta right now, the Ukon, the Viego, and then there's that Lee Sin, bit of an outlier for Husha, but come on. A Asian League of, League, League of Legends players, we all play Lee Sin, right? We all want to see like the style points, the mechanics, but of course, uh, Alex also has been playing a lot of the Trundle, which is very strong uh, on 12-12. I think that probably for this game, I'm not sure how much jungle focus will really be important because Alex for IMP, we don't really see him have that much of an impact in the early game. I think that's a bit of the, one of the weak points for the squad of IMP when they do field this roster. So we'll see. Uh, Corky, Poppy, Nar, and Silas are going to be the uh, instant first round bounce. What do we think? So my impressions of Impunity so far is that they're very much a jackpot focused drafting team. They think that their top lane player is probably their best mechanical player. And I think so far it does look like it. Uh, Jackpot did start out rather wobbly, but he later few games he did pick up. The big problem of course is Impunity actually, uh, they haven't found a single win since the last time they faced Beyond Gaming. They have been going on a drought and it's just so weird because they actually had a pretty solid win versus Beyond Gaming. They dropped that successful roster that found them a, a 0.500 mm -hmm. record and then they went on this new adventure 
which they have not found a win just yet. There's a lot of problems here. I feel like their bot lane laning phase has definitely been the biggest weakness of all. A lot of times their bot lane just implodes early on. There's no saving it. Um, but other than that, I just feel like the uh, you know the Apex champion pool can come off a little bit weird. And it does seem like Impunity are banking most of their hopes onto this top lane with Jack. Yeah, they're uh, really trying to hit the jackpot with this one uh, on the roster. I mean, they have they, they, they have these names, right? Because it used to be ICU and we're like, oh, ICU is going to send everyone into the ICU. And now they've got jackpot, which is like they're hoping to hit the jackpot. But I mean, BYG, the first pick of Jerry for Waco, of course, he just had an MVP performance on Jerry yesterday. I think it was 8-0 and 15. 92% kill participation, even as uh, an 80 carry. So still having that impact in the early game also. Uh, to snowball that uh, one yesterday. So Jerry is definitely a champion that Waco is pretty much the most comfortable on. And uh, it's interesting to see that Minji is going to be allowed to play Ari this time around. Usually Minji gets a lot of flack for not having the greatest uh, champion pool. He's kind of reliant on Silas, for example. And when we were looking at like 12-11 from week one of Summer Split until now, he just hasn't shown us a lot of options that he can play. So Ari is a pretty mid uh, pickup for him. Lucen just shows that they want to make stuff happen and try to snowball early game together with the Ari once she mm -hmm. hits that level six. Nautilus pickup for IMP again. Like this is the second time we're seeing it. Uh, second or third time that we're seeing it uh, today. It's not as strong on 1212. It's just that Nautilus has a very high win rate within the PCS and a lot of the PCS supports like to play it, which is why in our region in particular, uh, we see this a lot, but Viego, Talia, Nautilus, IMP are really looking to try and find their carries uh, in the second round of picks. Yeah, I, I feel like Impunity, they they have a good burst core, they have the crowd control, Yeah. And, uh, Talia come out and finish someone, but just looking at the first round of draft, the left side, just looking at the tier lists, has mm -hmm. some insane composition right here. This is yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't I'm see how Beyond Gaming get past, uh, Impunity get past the early game. Unsafe. Yeah, I'm really worried because BYG's comp, they want to go fast. They want to steamroll IMP early and then if they get their early advantage, if the game does go too late, they've also got Waco on Jer Jerry. Yeah. So they want to just roll over IMP space and I'm not sure how IMP can stop that. I would be super worried if they went for the Aphelios because I don't think you can try and turtle too late versus this BYG comp. Uh, so they will pick the Sidrani, which just means that IMP are effectively only going to have one carry unless like you know Apex pops off on the Talia and gets options for like burst damage later on in the game but I'm really worried for IMP because they're pretty much only going to have one uh, carry champion. Uh, Leona would be a good pickup for Kino. Amumu uh, hasn't been banned either uh, so those options are always available but it will be the Leona lock-in. Uh, she did get a very small buff on the recent patch so she gets a bit more damage I think on her attacks. So there's the Gwen as well for Lee Kai. This will be interesting because um, it suits their playstyle. Lee Kai's strength is that he plays better in the team fight. So they're just trying to get the Gwen into the team fight stage, hopefully not fall too far behind. But the thing is with the Leona and Gwen addition to the BYG composition, like I get that they're giving themselves options in the late game, but I thought they were going to fully commit to the early mid. I think Beyond Gaming has a... Uh, no, I think for most other teams, you look at this draft and you don't really like this. Uh, these five champions together. I would say for Beyond Gaming, this is one of their best comps because they are so used to playing with tempo in Kino's and in Husha's side. They're great at making picks and Minji actually has a strong lane dominance. You don't usually see that for Minji. He typically has mm -hmm. a very slow start. That's not the case mm -hmm. if you give him R. So Beyond Gaming, I think they have sky high playmaking potential. If this team snowballs, it's just over instantly. It has incredible power. Um, but for Impunity, I also feel like they came up with a good answer here. This hard crowd control, it's very difficult to avoid Nautilus plus Sejuani just throwing things at your face. 
and it's very easy for them to just get a kill and then snowball with their tanky front line. So I think both compositions, like if, if I was judging this in a vacuum and I wasn't looking at the, the, the IDs, I would give it to Impunity, but just knowing Beyond Gaming and how well they can play execution-wise, I feel like they're in their comfort zone. This is, this is their comp to lose. Yeah, one thing I find interesting about um, this draft and the way both of these teams have to play is that uh, for both of these teams, I think the crux here is that they need to not die. So what I mean is that for BYG, right, it's always very clear that if they want to win a game, then Minji and Lee Kai have to just not throw hard in early and mid. So this time around, you've got Gwen. You want you don't want her to fall too far behind coming to the team fights. And then on the side of IMP, they have the Aphelios as well, and it's going to go up against Waco's Jerry in particular. So they do have the option of like they want to win lane, and that's how like they need to pick for LSD as well because he's not known as the best laner. So for them, their priority is also making sure that LZ does not die. So it's going to be interesting to say the least to see. How how both these these teams do at uh in the early to mid well i think not die is a pretty good indication of lz's mission here as we do have the cleanse plus the call um <laughs> this is probably the yep. most i will try not to die <laughs> like he is the only damage here. on his team and he's also scaling right so for imp is just like we gotta not let lz fall behind because if yeah. he falls behind too much it's over for them <laughs> That's typically been the biggest hurdle to impunity. And also why I think they're not running their other Korean import in Yu Shin. Uh, we, we thought that, you know, if you import a Korean player, it typically is pretty costly. You have to get them set up, you know, all that. So yep. you, you, you rarely see organizations bench their Korean imports, but that's exactly what impunity are doing. They're going back to winning. Maybe, you know, the language barrier is less severe here, but uh, yeah, so I think far the I yeah, I feel like it probably, you know, had enough of the language barrier in spring when they're like trying out a mix of like English and yeah, Mandarin mm -hmm. speakers on their squad. Also, they had um, Top King last year who was Korean, but it was kind of like a workaround because he was a Korean student who was studying in Singapore uh, at the time. So they didn't really need to like get special visas or whatever for him back then. But I think IMP as a whole for the last two years have struggled with communication issues. I'm not sure whether they want to keep doing that. We've seen even like PSG during spring, just a whole bunch of communication between the Korean, the jungle, as well as the rest of their uh, roster. So yeah, that has played the region a fair bit. And Zakino getting hooked just now. So Botlin taking a bit of damage, but not all that uh, important just yet. Jackpot with the hands down best Sejuani skin in the game, I will take no criticism, no argument, that's just fact. Does she throw out like a coral cookie or something? Yeah, yeah, she's like um, hitting with like a... It looks like it's so big, it looks like a cinnamon oh, roll. Yeah. And her death animation is super cute. And like her W reset also is really cute. Like, mm. it's just... The skin is perfect. Like, I, I just like Riot like did not miss with the skin. The skin made True. so much money and like, I was part of the problem. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not a problem in my book. What are you talking about? I, exactly. I, I don't see that as a problem. <laughs> Take my money, Riot. Yeah. Star Guardian line, say less. I'm buying it all. <laughs> I have a problem, Clement. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's, it's not that bad of a problem. You're basically paying yourself. As uh, Jackpot does find a favorable trade here, Lee has to back out. And taking a look across the board, we had both jungle starts heading towards the top side. Jason getting a bit of vision there, and oh. in comes the start. Ooh, massive Yo. damage on the Ultra Shock laser. LZ needs to cleanse away the ignite. Good find here by Beyond Gaming. That second gank, if it does come, would be very, very easy to make succeed. Now that the cleanse is down. Yeah, the call early is really not giving LZ a lot of like options and fighting power, mm. so it's always a bit like dicey. And he's I feel is always going to start off a bit weak. Um, in the first few levels of the game, Husha right now being a bit aggressive. He's going to drop the ward over in between Grump as well as Blue, Poppy scrying uh, as well. Oh, 3v3 though. Alex is wrapping around by the side too. 
Although, we Yo! don't want to look at the bot lane, but meanwhile in the top, Lee Kai trying to find a good trade against Jackpot. He actually finds the first blood before anything happens in the bot. Our observers indeed is, know best. Yo, is ROB psychic or what? He's such on the three... <laughs> How did he know that top was gonna get first blood? There was literally a 3v3 in bot that both of us were like, No, what are you doing? Why are you switching camera? But man, I'm sorry, Obi, I'm sorry, Uniboy, I'm sorry, I will never doubt anyone again. <laughs> Jackpot, uh, losing the 1v1 early uh, despite having the... Uh, despite having the ignite, so we're gonna have to look at this one. Oh, the W was dodged by Lee Kai. Lee Kai stacking up, keeping the Conquerors there. Let's see if it oh, yeah, actually drops off. So he, got, he has full stacks and he dodges another W plus the Q on Jackpot. That leaves Jackpot in a oh, very no. awkward position and he knows. No, Poro! Poros don't save you from death. This has been proven. That's, that's, that's just sad, man. Think of the poor. He's got family too, and he dies belly up. I just, that just gets Lika's me in the heart. He's got family too. I will show no remorse for uh, losers of solos. No, wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. Let's see if they can uh, claw that one back. Who hurt you, Clement? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just very much against, against Yorls and Poros. I feel like they are... They're against the grim dark lore of League of Legends. So which you're is how the universe should You're anti fun is is, is yes. what I'm hearing. League of Legends should be different shades of uh, gray and dark and grime. That's 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 my League of Legends. I, I love the way that they wrote about Bilgewater. It was like yeah. tons of game fights. Yeah. It was people's guts all over the place from like cannon fire stuff like that. I feel like you must have really liked Arcane then, because that, like, the art style and oh, everything. It was so good. It was, it was, so it was good. actually dark, and it was actually moral, morally mm -hmm. speaking, very great. So, yeah. back to the game. We do have a 3v2 on the top. Alex is going to show up as support for Jackpot, and Jackpot just He's being six. six should have his ultimate. And beyond gaming, call it quits. Yeah, I think BYG did the uh, smart thing right there. They realized that Sedge was level 6 and they instantly back out because we don't want to get hit by that. No goes in but doesn't find LZ turnaround happening right now. And I'll oh, please continue. <laughs> Yeah, supports are still only just level 4, so the pink ward is going to spot out Apex, who's trying mm. to, you know, hug the wall, get the movement speed boost, get to bot as fast as he can, but BYG know what's up, even though they actually have 4 members, they've got jungle and mid, actually looking like they might want to uh, sneak around towards bot. However, IMP is very pushed in, it's a bit far, so Apex is going to call that one off, whole bunch of pings going on, so the BYG do know that Tilia is back in lane, and that their bot should be safe for now. I think bot right now is probably a race to see which of Leona and Nautilus can hit that level 6 first. It looks like we're probably going to win this exchange just because of how IMP played that level 1. They will probably hit level 6 first. So that's going to be big when that happens. Let's see if it does occur here. Both of these players getting really close. You know, on the top lane, our observer really likes these trades. It's probably heard you talking about the skins, and he's trying to show us a lot more of it. <laughs> like, it's not just me. This is like a universal <laughs> truth that this is one of the best skins in the game. This and Corky Corky. That's that's just top one and two. Let's see if Mushak gets spotted out here. Ooh, the scanner does not find the ward in the bot lane, so Impunity do have that vision advantage. Let's see if they can force Minji to use the Spirit Rush. Alex closing oh. in, but not in range. For the stun, Minji playing very calm, cool, and collected, goes back to come out again. Yeah, BYG right now, uh, we've got three. I think Husha is going to back off into a lane, however, so there's a bit of a cross map play going on. I think Alex knows he can't try to take Shelly right in front of Lee Kai's face. The disrespect, the audacity, weighing it. Okay, Apex is here, they're gonna chase the Lee Kai off instead. The bot lane isn't coming for impunity oh, if Likai stays here long it. enough. Ultra Shock Laser coming in. Wako is into the fight. He pops the ultimate, chasing everyone around, and Jockpot is down. He has nowhere to go. Apex, let's see if he can survive this one. Not able to make it a massive snowball for Beyond Gaming. Uh, impunity, I, I, I'm just so baffled by that play. I feel like they were way too confident in the ability to take the no, Their bot lane didn't move at all. 
Yeah, I think what they wanted to do was just have LD get as many solo turret plates as he can over in Bad You can see he's probably gonna be able to- nope, he's gonna back off before he gets a third one, but still, like, 320 gold pre-10 minutes is a hefty amount of change for him in his back pocket. You can see he's got the Moon Quiver already uh built so that's gonna be very helpful for him in lane the thing is i'm not sure that was really the sacrifice that imp wanted they wanted to go across the map right which was uh herald the bot tower plates and if not to sure it really worked out for them because if you want to choose like herald they're gonna get the first brick off of this but it is 3v3 let's see if they have their ultimates jackpot still without the ult but they're going in regardless minji on the side here gets the Q across multiple targets. A lot of people low, but Benji will walk out. Let's see if they can finally get the kill. Alex gets one. Husha finds the return. Now Jackpot is chasing after Leeson, but he's way too agile. Wako now in the back line trying to find some more. Oh. Husha probably has got nowhere to go. Burning down, doesn't find the Krux, and that's gonna be a one for two trade into the top lane. Good response here. We're gonna watch this again as it's the Herald fight. I've got to say this is incredibly greedy for impunity. If they want to make this play happen, they should have 100% just focused on the Herald. Instead, they switch targets. They try to take down Lika. I'm not sure if Lika does go down in the end, but beyond gaming, they find so many kills here. They equalize out the gold into the top side. And uh, you, you were talking about 320 gold being a lot. Well, Wako's got two kills, one assist, and I believe four plates. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, trade for sad times uh, for LZ hoping to capitalize off of the turret plate gold. But yeah, a bit of a confusing play from IMP, as you mentioned. Uh, the thing is, they actually got the zone off of Lukai so well mm. that they could have easily done Shelly without any interference from BYG. Yeah. If you, like, when we're looking at the replay, also. So was that the rest of the BYG squad? They actually approached from mid as well as uh, as well as the jungle over towards the river. So they actually had. Been Usha's gonna find them. LZ in the middle of nowhere, but uh, but does get stunned down by Lini. No. And now Kino is in a really bad place. Let's see if Waco can make it. All the shock laser across the board, and they are turning this one around. Kino goes down. Usha soon to follow. All five members of Unity were well gathered. They were ready for the fight. While Beyond Gaming were pushing their luck on this one. Jackpot might be going down though as Link Guy flies in with the ultimate. Now two members slowed. minji has got the reset. He's looking for more. Does he have any more charges? No, no more charges left. He's looking for the kill here. If he does find it, that could be more trouble. As the Pebbles are about to tag down. Nope, doesn't find it. Beyond Gaming with another kill onto the top side, onto Jack, uh, onto Winnie, I think, here. And at the end of the fight, Impunity not able to capitalize on the kills to turn it into a Drake. It's not the end of the world for IMP. You know, like we look at the composition, the like, IG drafted, they have the Leafs in, they've got the Ari, they're expecting them to make those plays, make those moves early, whereas IMP are still trying to, you know, focus uh, all their eggs into the LZ basket. So it's not that bad that they're a bit behind. We're going to take at this replay. They think that they catch out LZ at the start, but then it's really Kino right there. He's forced to be the, the ultimate to try and stall a bit for time. Uh, and he does manage to catch out a couple of the IMP members, however, the entire squad of IMP is here. It's a very split fight, it's very scrappy and messy from the squad of the You can see only now the guy is trying to show up for the flank already. It's like, well, it's a kind of deep three. They do manage to pick up some because IMP are a bit low, but again, just not the greatest team fight from both of these squads. It's kind of the thing that's really been plaguing both of them the entire of the first round Robin, right? Because we expect more from BYG, um, but just time and again, they just have these like messy team fights, these scrappy fights, they don't have the best decision making. But talking about decision making, Jackpot and Alex right here hoping to catch out a Lee Kai over he in the top. He's pretty fed at this point. Uh, this one could go gonna... wrong, actually, but oh. it is going to be a 3v1. They we want that pig! enough help here so they will find the big shutdown in the meantime though beyond gaming will be shredding away on this bot lane so it's uh we still have to for a for plating yeah like it's very uh smarter than a great build efficient one mm -hmm. kill and then you get another plus 300 from the bounty uh yeah. that leak i had still worth it. 
Mm -hmm. Pretty worth Hucha right now. He's gonna walk over the wall though, mm. so if you know that he's there. Also spot out Muji around the back, so IMP instantly know it's for- Yo, did Winnie just try and hook? It's 4v2! <laughs> what did he do that for? Hey, they don't know where Sejuani is, you know. They gotta put some pressure where oh. he can. Now that one was uh, kind of interesting as well. Kino does manage to get out of harm's way, and that was also the real flash from Winnie. I'm so. about to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I like it when rookies do that. I, I commend that attempt. It did not work <laughs> out, but it was a good try. It, uh, it keeps us on our toes, which mm. is what I think a lot of people who watch PCS watch it for. You know, the, uh, the entertainment value, the sheer entertainment that you get out of watching like Scion, Mordekaiser, Elise in this current meta, all things we've seen just today alone. Uh, blue hand uh, handoff going over to Ninji. Will be helpful. He's already been low on mana right there and doing a pretty decent job in lane up in CS off of Apex by about 10. Also, you know, we're always uh, talking about the questions that we have for MG because he's not as lane dominant as we would like. But doing a pretty okay job this time. We're taking a look at the player gold for a ton of them, of course. Waco topping the charts with the 6400 as he usually does. So, BYG, if they can just carry. Uh, this momentum that they have into the rest of the game this should be a fairly standard uh, pickup for them if Waco can close things out because Waco has generally been the most stable presence on this BYG roster. And it does look like beyond gaming, I, I just feel like they're trading so much better across the map. Yeah. Waco's getting they fed are. Well, on the other hand, it's actually Jackpot. Oh no! One charge! No! 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 Not even one! Not today! Well, <laughs> Back to the beyond gaming you. and their largesse. They they didn't even need that herald. Why like, did they put Shelly in mid lane just as we were talking about them making good <laughs> decisions? They didn't have the wave. I mean, yeah, they won't have another one because it's 16 and a half minutes. So Nyx is going to be the Baron spawn. So it's a bit unfortunate. But, uh, oh well. Now we will be heading on. And I have to say, the gold lead is incredibly close. It's just. Yep far better distribution on the side of Beyond Gaming. They actually have the kills on all of their damage dealers, which uh, I, I feel like works a lot better. Once you get Waco fed, yep. it, it's really about Impunity charging into you. Like Impunity have to be the ones to, to actually look for the yeah. kill to shut down this, uh, this Sadie this carry. And she does have cleans, uh, also has the moral shield pull, so there's a lot of stuff that they need to work through here. I feel like Beyond Gaming still in a very dominant position going into this team fight. It's really exactly. about how Impunity can find the back line and get that instant burst in. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard trying to catch out Waco. As mentioned, got Cleanse, also got Kino just frontlining for him, got the Lee Sin kick if anything goes wrong, and also just a straight to the face charm with the REP. So it's gonna be hard trying to catch out the- Oh, Ninji! Oh, that Leona ultimate! That was a great position to try and delay the squad of IMP. And you know, they're gonna be able to take the dragon so fast. Yeah, really nicely done. Oh, but Kino might not be so lucky as he does go down. Impunity retreat across the ramp. Lots of damage being dealt by Wako and oh. the lead guy as they find the kill. Niji flashes forward for that one. Impunity in the end. They uh, do get a one for one, but they lose on the Drake. Beyond Gaming just with beautiful command of that ramp. They knew exactly how to play that, how to keep members away. Mm -hmm. And Impunity, I don't think they really had much of a chance in making it over. Yeah, also, they trade one for one, but they're trading their jungler for the enemy support, so absolutely yeah. worth it in BYG's books. I mean, Kino, like, you might look at the Leonia of Ben, some people might think, oh, that he wasted his ultimate too early, but I think, like, that that was so good. They managed to buy so much time for the rest of his team to really burst down the dragon. IMP at that point, they were kind of too committed. They knew, even though the BYG had already taken the dragon, that they had to go for the fight there, so they knew that they had already he lost the Drake. So Apex gets spotted here. Minji actually still walks uh... forward. Ooh, gets the full burst rotation. Spirit Rush does come out in the end. And that should at least be the tower for top lane on Impunity's side. 
which actually gives them the gold lead. So, you know, despite all of the, that we're talking about, they're still very much in the running to continue this game. Oh, Apex! What are you doing? It's a good sound he's fine, he's for fine. nothing. He just wanted the, the, the minions to get there a little bit faster. He took one for the team. <laughs> he wanted to feel the thrill of getting hit by Tower on 1212, you know? Hmm. The extra damage is a bit of a bummer here. As, uh, you, you know, the, the extra damage actually scales proportionally with the extra HP that everyone received. But mm -hmm. the problem is you also spend a lot more time underneath the tower itself trying to kill yeah. the enemy. Because the enemy also has a lot more HP. So exactly. overall it just does end up making tower diving quite a bit harder. Yeah, and, especially uh, early game too. Mm -hmm. And I mean, especially for teams that weren't all that great at like communicating and juggling tower aggro, it just got even harder uh, in the last few weeks, which is why we don't see as many uh, tower dives or tower dive compositions going on, not just BCS, but worldwide. Also, yeah, tempo is quite slower. I do <laughs> think Riot's going to change things up quite a bit. We did see the 12.14 like sneak peeks, and it's all about improving the importance yeah, of early fighting. So For sure. I think that there is no world where Riot goes into worlds with a patch like durability patch that's no, like anti-dive. No there's like, there's zero chance. <laughs> exactly. So like we're just like, you know, warming up, getting the boring patches out of the way before they switch things up and suddenly at worlds it's gonna be like crazy stuff, crazy comps all over again. But that's what people like to watch. I think that's actually really bad for teams like PSG that just play slow the entire year. And every time they hit an international, it's like the fastest patch That's in memory. True. <laughs> yeah, I feel like PSG is always unlucky in that sense. Oh, hang on. Ninja going in for the charm does find it, but there is a backline dive here. Oh, Jackpot, the flank! Find the target, he does find Ninja with the kickback onto Alex. They don't find the kill. Ninja with the turnaround, Jackpot is next. As Lee got goes in into the front line, it's two one v three, but Gwen packs a lot more firepower in this situation. Benji gets the reset with another spirit rush. Can he find a use for it? Not yet. At the end of the day, it is a three for one. Beyond gaming, come up big. Jackpot almost with that monster flank around the back. I think he only managed to hit one person uh, with the CC. At the start of that, I think BYG just turned around and just decided to focus the drone instead. We're gonna take another look at this. There's when he tries to hook out, but does get charmed back in. So I already know that Sabroni is coming, and the only lands is this time on the line. Usha gets Jackpot back, kicks it across Alex. And the interruption right there just saves his back line. Well, look at him. He's actually really low health before he gets the uh, extra HP back from the, the kills there. Would have gone down, I think, if Alex got a, that just that split second to send the auto attack you off. So, great job by Huja just keeping his uh, mid laner alive. And uh, I just feel like uh, Ari is. Ari feels so broken because she can stay alive, and once she gets that one takedown, she's into your back line. She's got infinite resets. Let's see if Impunity can make this work again. They're angling for a pickoff here. Jackpot, if they can find us in the funnel. No, it's actually going to Did be Minji catching out the support instead. Alex has to run away with the ultimate, and it turns into a disaster for Impunity. In goes Minji to the back line. He's looking at LD, flashes across the wall, finds the 80 carry, and they want it all. Apex is down as well. That's going to be a perfect ace. For beyond gaming to potentially turn around for the bear. We give BYG a whole bunch of flack for the messy, scrappy fights that they had in the first 10 15 minutes or so, but they've definitely proven us wrong in the last two team fights. That chain CT is so crisp from BYG. We saw the Leona uh, ultimate straight into the charm from Mitchie, and I gotta say, Mitchie's been pretty on point uh, with these point blank charms. You can see right there, Kino's about to drop the Leona right there. I wasn't trusting to grab that one, and in the insta charm on to win. You actually know they have to sit uh, this part down and that's just all the systems go at that point. It's a matter of them going up front to back and then clean it up shop. You can see the MG as you're talking about getting those resets. And that's the thing about the Ari as well. If she starts off with a charm 
uh, to start off a team fight. Like, 70 seconds later, she's gonna have that available again, and she's gonna be able to dash and have another full round of the spells. So that's one of the sick parts about Arnie, which is why we've been seeing her uh, a lot ever since 1211 at the start of PCS this summer. So I'm impressed. I think that Minji is actually playing this really well. I think Ari is one of those few champions that he can play this well so i'm glad that it's been working out great for byg this time i counted seven dashes there by uh, ari in that team Sheesh. fight and we have to remember the team fight started in the middle of the map and uh -huh. behind the enemy in the third tower so there you go ari rework i would say it's a uh, pretty successful <laughs> at least for minji yep for byg it's working out great <laughs> I am Pretty people. ridiculous how mobile some of these champions are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, she's just a great option when you want to just carry early mid game events and into late. If your team has other options, like Jerry, like uh, Gwen, that BYG have right now. I'm not sure really what else IMP can try to do. We are saying that their main goal for early mid game is to not fall behind too much. So if you're just looking at bot, like LZ isn't actually that far behind in terms of CS off of Waco. But Waco is also 3-0 and 9 on top mm -hmm. of the 15 CS that he has up off of LZ. And when you look at the rest of the team, it kind of only gets worse uh, from there. BYG as a whole are up to 7,500 gold off of IMP. Like I don't think IMP have the option to turtle this out anymore because the wave clear eh, is not that great. You know, they're going to really just try to stick around and base, not leave, and then just try and wave clear from there, but I don't see that as an angle where they can try to come back. They're very far behind in the item curve. We talked mm -hmm. about sort of a front-to-back composition. You have better front lines, in my estimation, between the Sejuani and the Nautilus going forward, but unfortunately, uh, at this point, I don't think it really matters because Waco is way too bad. And you also have Ari that can just go in your back line. It doesn't really have a care in the world. LZ also you know, hasn't hit that third item mark we like to talk about for the Abelio. So Impunity can come back, but it requires a lot of holding on to do. And I have to criticize them. I would say that they just got greedy around the back. The first, first Herald fight, they should have backed off. They were going to get 320 gold. And that's a, that's a good trade if you're the Abelio side. It, that, that's fine. They actually greeted for the Herald, and then also greeted to kill the guy. That just backfired tremendously. And then they also had the weird fight at Drake where they tried to funnel up a ramp. They used four of their ultimates before the fight started to kill Kino. And Beyond Gaming just walked in on them. So I just feel like in Punity, they need to learn about moderation. It's, it's not about throwing everything in a single go. Yeah, I have to kind of think about steps two, three, four, or five. And if you don't want to think about those steps, you probably need to play a different cop. <laughs> I agree. I think their decision making definitely could use some work. It's just as you said, right? You don't want to see one person and then throw everything in the kitchen sink at them because then you're not going to have any gas left in the tank for any type of follow up. Mm. Right now, Kino gets spotted on the ward, but BYG don't care. They're so far here. They can just pretty much walk wherever they want into the enemy jungle. If you just take a look at the Winnie? ward coverage. Winnie? No. No. What are you doing, Winnie? No. Waco is going to stay alive, relatively healthy right here. HP is low, but it doesn't matter. They catch many out in no man's land. Apex is down. That's the two carries, and the tanks are left here as Minji just chases into the back line with no regard for human life here. Impunity, last member standing is Jackpot, and they're going to end the game with handing over another perfect ace to Beyond Gaming. The engaged squad from Beyond Gaming is just on point the entire game. They catch out Impunity at the worst moments and make them pay the highest prices. Congratulations to Beyond Gaming to evening up this head-to-head -head matchup, now one-to-one, -one, and continuing the woes of Impunity. This is pretty much the dream game for BYG, right? Because you've got Waco on his comfort Jerry pick, he gets a hit early, he just face rolls in the later stage of, stages of the game, but that's to be expected, right? Usually when we see BYG win, they win through Waco. However, the thing that was different this time around was that Minji 
and Lee Kai both did well. And this is something that BYG has been trying to do the entire summer split. They've been trying to have all the stars align and have their three lanes all performing at the same time. So uh, yeah, this is pretty much the dream game for them this time around. I mean, Lee Kai having a good performance on the Gwen, but Minji in particular just really utilizing the Aria to her full capability. capability. So props to BYG for finally figuring out this time around. Uh, and yeah, good on them. Yeah, I'm uh, you know, very surprised that this is what happened. This last pick, Nautilus, uh, <laughs> I don't think worked out quite that well for them. I, I was a little bit surprised that they didn't go for Nautilus. Uh, I think he's yeah. just a rookie in this regard. So he gets caught out of nowhere. LZ pays the price as Fuja uses him as a surfboard, kicks him out, and you know, once those resets come in, uh, Minji just goes in for free. He's got no care whatsoever. The damage is gone. It's just a bunch of things right now. And Waco, despite starting this fight off 400 HP, he's going to end at about 50%. It doesn't matter whatsoever. This is the type of game that Beyond Gaming loves to play. These are the type of champions that they are so good at. Fighters for Lee Kai. You got tempo play for Minji. I just feel like this draft went a little too well for, for Beyond Gaming. It's, it might not be like the, the necessarily the meta S tier draft, mm -hmm. but it, for Beyond Gaming, this is their S tier draft. Yeah, I mean, I like what we see in the PCS often, which is that teams don't necessarily draft what is good for patch, they draft what is good for them. Whether this comes from comfort picks or whether it That's comes cool. from just what works in the play style, I like that we see this a lot in the PCS. Like, BYG, for example, this is a great example of that. Early on, Jewish team also, like, their type of composition is just absolutely unthinkable if you're thinking standard 12, 12B meta, but it works for them and they make it work, so it definitely pays off. Uh, IMP, uh, for a player with literally the word win in his ID, my man don't seem to be doing a lot of winning. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard to say. I, I think Impunity, they're, they're just caught in such a bad place because they need to fix yeah. so many problems at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think ideally they do want to run both of their Korean imports, but they're probably facing language barriers. And running Winnie with this... Uh, with running this composition, I, I don't think they have reliable engagement at all. Like, nobody on this team is actually a standout, standout engager. So, it presents so many problems. I feel like Impunity actually had a lot of chances to pull the trigger, but you could tell that there's no real one person that is going to make that amazing play to do so. It, it just feels very scattered, and it just handed over the agency to Beyond Gaming. If they had a fighting I mean... chance, I felt like in the mid-game they were close enough for a comeback. Yeah, I mean, at some point, you know, you gotta ask yourself, uh, which is easier, learning how to play League of Legends or learning Korean, right? To see what you want to do. Why not matter? Do. I feel like that makes a little bit more sense, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, the MVP is going to go over to Gwen. Uh, Lee Kai over in the top side, 7, 1, and 8, 75% KP. I'm a bit surprised that it's not going to go over to Ninji on the Ari, but I mean, uh, props to Lee Kai also because he played this one pretty well. Yeah, I think the angles on his um, ultimates were so mm -hmm. beautiful. The needlework, uh, the one in River, he got like a four man right off the start, and the one where he caught Winnie, I think it was a three man as well. So absolutely amazing stuff from Lee Kai, and I believe that is the snip snip <laughs> that you're doing right there. I wasn't exactly sure. It I was is. thinking about why are you doing an Urgot crab dance? That no, Urgot sense. crab. Look, crab is clearly this one, all right. But the thing is, because Gwen, she doesn't, she doesn't use two scissors. She uses yeah, like she that one big one. scissor. But if you do this, no oh, one no. has any clue what you're doing because it's like really, what? yeah. I anyway, feel like that one's I'm... a little bit more obvious. Like, I, no, I, I'm, I'm scared done, of that one. No, I'm, I'm done embarrassing of... myself on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but we have today's results for you. We started off with a lot of bangers, two upsets in Jewish team and D Cross Community. Congratulations to those teams. And we rounded out the day with some close games from Sem9, a bit of a disappointment from Impunity, and those are our uh, those are our results for today. What was your most memorable play? I literally every single game today was a banger because Jewish team winning Frank Esports, that was crazy. I think uh, the most normal game for me is probably CFO. 
uh, CFOs with. That was the most textbook one that I can think of. Uh, JT versus M- SM9 also looks so dicey for the first 15 minutes or so that that looked like it could have gone either way. And I'm just happy that we got to see so many upsets today. I mean, after the crazy week that we had last week, where we also saw a lot of upsets from a lot of the lower ranking teams versus the better ranked teams in the standings, I thought we were done with the upsets, but apparently not. We're starting out the second round robin with a lot of shenanigans also, which is, uh, I think, what we all like to see here in the BCS. Exactly. I, I Honestly, I feel like there's only two teams that haven't really ramped up, or three. It's basically Frank Esports, Impunity, and Meta. Those are your three teams. I, I think mm-hmm. that, you know, I expected a lot more room for growth. Haven't really delivered on that one. Yeah. I trust in Frank. Not sure about the other two guys. We'll see if they can do better in tomorrow's matches as we do have Meta Falcon team against Jewish team. This is a great check to see if Jewish team are climbing yeah. up the ladder. And then we have the ultimate upsets of all upsets, Sam9 versus PSG, of course. And then Frank Esports heading up against JT to close off the day. Yeah, I think that CFO versus BYG will also be interesting. It's definitely going to be a tough battle uh, for BYG because CFO play probably one of the most stable games in the league. They they always don't really go for anything crazy. They generally tend to play meta or they play stuff that are comfort picks, you know, for them, but are also pretty meta. So in that sense, they're a very, team that's very easy to read, but they play that style so well. So I think that BYG will really have like a huge challenge ahead of them going up against the CFO but we were looking at the rankings earlier on you know it's not all that much change in terms of like where the top eight cards are falling this time around but as you're saying like Frankie Sports, Meta Falcon for example IMP I think looking at those teams at the start of the summer split we had a lot of high hopes right especially for teams like Frankie Sports like Impunity who looked like they were bringing in an entirely new roster they were switching things up but I feel as if the anticipation for these teams is kind of tempered a bit because they're kind of falling in like the middle bottom of the pack so now that we're actually more than halfway through the league I'm not really sure how much room there is for these teams right. to really improve. I got one question for you is yeah? the home team is impunity making playoffs that's the yes. only real question yes 100 percent look they can make it eighth no uh-huh. problem look come on mm-hmm. okay they might get overtaken by jewish team but i think that they can still make it into the top eight okay i i i agree with that i feel like mft and, you know mft and punity sem 9 are actually on my danger list right now but mm-hmm. it's been absolutely wonderful to have you here as a color caster i love just screaming about sponsors and random tangents being play by play is really fun for me as well so uh, I hope you all had a wonderful day today. This was week four, day two of the PCS, and we will be returning to, I think, a world standard lineup tomorrow on uh, day three. So remember to tune back in. We've got plenty more action, plenty more upsets down the road on our way to playoffs.